the thing that gets me excited, the thing that makes me uh, you know, skip to work every day is just the idea of changing the way that consumers think about the movie-going experience, changing the way people consume um, media, and how we can take something that might have been perceived as a very stable, mature industry like the theatrical space and turn it into something of a growth engine for media companies and for exhibitors and other people in the industry. Digital cinema and digital 3D opens up a whole world of possibilities for the cinema space, not only preserving the heritage as being the premium place to see a movie, the, the, the place where you, know, you can create events and memorable moments, but also uh, the place that becomes the single out-of-home destination for entertainment experiences. We view 3D as not a gimmick or something that can be used uh, flippantly in a way that, that maybe it was in, uh, used in years past. We feel, and our animators feel, that this is really just expanding the set of creative options available to a filmmaker. And does it add something to the story? Is it something that can be used to really bring out the emotional range of a film? Is it something that can be used to create a, a unique world, an immersive world? When a filmmaker is creating a film, he really wants to uh, create a place where people can completely uh, give in and, and uh, immerse themselves in stories and in characters and in a, in a, in a world that the director has created. And, and frankly, we feel like 3D is just as much a part of that and just, uh, just as impactful, maybe even more impactful than some of the other developments that have happened from a technology standpoint in, uh, in the uh, filmmaking space, you know, whether it's you know, sound or color or those types of things. We've certainly drunk the Kool-Aid and are feeling like this does create uh, a, a, real, a realistic, immersive world for, for a filmmaker. The CGI animation world has always developed films from a 3D perspective, and only now they're able to bring those films to the audience in the same way that they've created them on their, on their monitors in the, in the production space. Digital certainly takes down a lot of the barriers for uh, filmmakers to get content on the screen. The distribution costs are dramatically lower when you can uh, deal digitally. You can deliver over the Internet if you wanted to your films to theaters and they could pull it. Um, so in a sense, it does create a much more uh, fluid market for people to participate. In many ways, it's the same types of things that are going on online or in other spaces. When, when you get digital, it really starts to empower uh, other market participants to, to join in. And, and if there was one big thing that digital enables, it's the flexibility of a theater to program in a much more flexible way, whether it's in their own auditorium, you know, sh making sure that they're able to shift capacity around much more flexibly and ensure that you maybe don't ever have a sold-out show again because you're flexing your capacity to accommodate the demand, or even more broadly, taking in other forms of content that, uh, uh, that you might, might not have otherwise been able to, to take in. You can start targeting to local taste, targeting to, you know, to, to regional programming taste, and, and, and it, you know, it never really stops. One of the things in our Miramax days, days when we were releasing very targeted niche films and would do what we call platforming the release, where we test it in a couple of markets and then roll it out broadly, uh, digital cinema, when you have the, with the press of a button the ability to broadcast uh, point to multi point uh, releases in a much more flexible way and in a real time way, you can take advantage of those consumer uh, you know kind of tendencies now with twitter and and Facebook and some of the other types of social media to really see a trend happening and get it out to the market really quickly and make sure that everybody's able to enjoy it in, in the same way that we weren't able to do in uh, in the physical space when we were constrained by this physical logistics piece. Well, early on, it was definitely a challenge to try to figure out how we could subsidize the cost of the digital cinema equipment without getting into the theater's business. When exhibitors saw the price tag on digital cinema equipment, it was in excess of $100,000 when we started five years ago. Compared to, I think, a, a standard 35-millimeter projector setup costs about $35,000. And at the time they felt that the uh, the benefits of installing digital cinema only accrued to the studios as a result of lower distribution costs, basically getting out of the business of shipping these large 35-millimeter prints all around the world, 
there was a lot of conversations about who ultimately stood to benefit and who needed to step up to the plate and pay for the equipment. And we as a studio decided as, as one of the first to help subsidize the cost of that equipment and pay uh, for a portion of the digital cinema rollout. So how could we invest and help them spark the market, get things moving from a, from a, a capital standpoint without actually owning the equipment or without actually getting too deeply involved in their business. And we, we ended up negotiating certain types of deals with third parties who would roll out the equipment and we would help pay for the equipment over time. And then, you know, once we finally had that model solidified and started to roll it out around the world, the global economy crashed. And it takes a lot of money to get digital cinema deployed. And even though both studios and exhibitors found a model for getting things rolling and found this kind of economic model, then the banks stopped cooperating because they weren't lending money for a uh, for a, a piece of uh, of technology that actually hadn't been in market for that long, largely untested piece of technology. So I think both of those hurdles now are starting to to clear. Uh, digital 3D is booming, and I think the mentality within both the studio and the exhibition community is much more one of collaboration and sharing and openness to the idea that digital cinema equipment, which is the foundation for having digital 3D, is is a real uh, benefit to both studios and exhibitors. And going forward, when you talk about doing things like alternative content and other types of events, those those benefits also start to accrue to both exhibitors and distributors. And I think over the next three years, we're going to get to potentially the point where we could flip the switch and start saying in many places, we're only going to release digitally because now the money is starting to flow from the banks. The business case for exhibitors as a result of digital 3D is is really there. And so I, I, I foresee that the next couple of years are, are going to be very, very rapid in the in the rollout, both in the U.S. and some major markets abroad. Long term, some of the biggest issues and and where I think we'd like to be in a number of years is, is really just being able to release films uh, from a wide 3D-only standpoint. I think the filmmakers who are making 3D films right now are feeling like the audience is not completely getting to see the film, both because of the constraint at the, uh, at the theater level. There just aren't enough 3D screens to sustain wide 3D-only releases for the entire run of the film. And so that's one of the things that we want to, to make sure is not there, the bottleneck of 3D screens, which I, you know, we're working on every day to try to make sure more 3D screens get deployed. Um, and I also think that the other piece of it is that in the long term, we want to make sure that people are able to view the films in a 3D way in any medium that they're looking to consume the film, whether it's on their PCs, whether it's on the television screen and from the broadcast uh, cable, satellite, uh, television providers, or whether it's on physical media, and you know, physical media still exists in 20 years. I think we just want to make sure that uh, there's nothing sacrificed, or there are no constraints along the way to getting the content that is intended to be seen in 3D uh, from being seen in 3D on every single platform possible. It's really exciting to kind of hit on something that is uh, well received by both the business constituents and the the marketplace. And, you know, hopefully this is something that will stick and, and continue to roll out. And it's, it's just exciting to be part of a company that is forward thinking and uh, also very, very uh, interested in doing what's, what we think consumers uh, are interested in participating in. 